How's it going, everybody? I'm back with another review. My first review on my ACW got some pretty decent feedback and surprisingly, uh, a lot of requests for me to do some more videos. So um, I guess I'll start here with what I own and we'll see where it goes from there. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a Colt 1911. And before I move forward, I just want to say, uh, you know, there's 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 something special about owning a Colt, specifically a Colt 1911. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it, but it's just something that just feels right. It feels good, especially if you are a 1911 fan. This particular model that I'm going to be talking about today is the Colt Railgun. I find that name kind of Kind of funny because, uh, you know, Colt always has these super cool names for their guns and for their 1911s. But for this one, they just decided to go with the rail gun. They kept it simple. But anyways, it works. This model is the O1980RG. The rail gun comes in three different models. It comes in the one that I, I just described to you. It also comes in a polished stainless steel slide with a blued frame, and that's the O1970RG, and then also a polished stainless, stainless steel slide with matte stainless, and that's the O1070RG. Now this gun was introduced back in 2009. Colt was one of the, the last big name 1911 maker, makers to adopt a rail frame. Most notable at that time, back in 2009, there was the Springfield Operator and the Kimber TLE slash RL2. Colt Railgun was based off of the Colt XSE Enhanced Pistol. It served as a basis, you know, a, a, a template platform, and they just added an integrated rail. With this particular model here, this is a um series 80s pistol all right it is a all carbon machined forged platform meaning that the slide and the frame right is is it's all forged there's no mems there's no there's no casting uh, it's chambered in 45 acp has a capacity of eight plus one and speaking of that let's go ahead and clear this bad boy here put that on the side clear. It uh, has a 5-inch Colt National Match Barrel. You can see that here. All right. Has Novak sights, white dots. So we have the two in the back and then the one in the front. Front and rear cocking serrations. All right. Lowered and flared ejection port. It's a GI style standard bushing barrel for a simple takedown. Okay. It has a upswept beaver tail. Okay. Nice, nice and high there with a, a, a palm swell as well. Uh, the fit for this gun, you know, it, it's, it's pretty decent for a production gun. Does have some rattle in it. Has a extended ambi safety. So here and here, you can see it's a little bit, little bit longer. All right, it has a three-hold aluminum trigger with adjustable travel screw. A slight undercut underneath the frame so, so you can get a higher grip. All right, it has a standard slide stop and a standard mag release. Uh, obviously an integrated light rail. The model itself does not come with a magwell does not come with front strap checkering. All right, uh, MSRP at the time for this was about $1,087. Overall, this is, this is a, a well-constructed 1911. Um, it's just, it, it feels good in the hand. It's nice and solid. Um, it's it's a, great, a great pistol. It has great quality for what you're paying for. 
um, some modifications that I end up doing to it. So starting off the grips, I've got some BZ grips. These are the Operator 2s and Hyena Brown. All right. Um, this trigger is actually an upgrade that I did. This is a Wilson Combat Medium Trigger. The original trigger is here. It was black, um, made by Colt. Okay. I wanted to go with the Wilson, the Wilson Combat because, you know, it's Wilson Combat. So why not? Um, at the same time, when I was purchasing this, they had a deal on the plunger tubes also. So I ended up upgrading that. The original one was a solid black with uh, serrations on the, on the tip. Okay. But I went with a uh, stainless steel variant. This mainspring housing, right? The gun does not come with a mainspring housing. So I ended up ordering a Ed Brown mainspring housing and, you know, fits pretty good functions. There is a, there's kind of a, kind of a large gap that's in, that's in there. I can, I can definitely fit a piece of paper in there if I tried. On the front here, I put some skateboard tape. I actually got this idea from a YouTuber who Took skateboard tape, he ordered it from Amazon. I ended up doing the same, the same thing and, and I put it on just make sure that if you're gonna do it too, you take off the grips, you apply the, the tape and then put the grips over it. So that way you have a nice clean edge on both sides. Uh, another alteration that I, that I ended up doing, I took my, my, my Dremel and I, I rounded off the edge here. The reason why is when I would shoot, Right, I like to shoot with thumb over safety. Um, it had kind of a sharp edge here. Like you can you can see it on this side. This is original, but this this edge was really sharp. So every time that I shoot, you know, it would dig into my like my thumb, and it was not comfortable at all. So I ended up taking the Dremel and just rounding that off, and um, the fit is just a lot better for me. And of course, the last upgrade I'm going with, with this was the Surefire X300 UB with a thousand lumens. And just so you guys know, for all of you that like to tighten down your Surefire with a screwdriver, you don't need to do that. You can use just a regular dime or a penny, right? To quickly unscrew and tighten whatever you want. Actually, no, let's, let's leave that off for the rest of the review. And this is the uh, mainspring housing. This is the mainspring housing that it ended up coming with. And this is probably my biggest complaint about the gun because this is just plastic, right? Plastic. Everything else about the, the, the gun, you know, it's got nice forged materials, carbon, um, and then they throw on this cheap plastic mainspring housing. I don't know why. But anyways, that was the main reason why I, I ended up um, replacing it with a good quality variant out there. Let's show you the trigger here. All right. And then the reset. Okay, again, a little bit of creep. Not bad overall. Um, the other dislike that, that I, I have about it is, you know, Colt, Colt is known for having some, some pretty sharp edges on their, on their guns, and this one does not disappoint. Uh, it has some sharp edges, you know, around here, around the ejection port, um, the back of the, the slide. And before I put this mainspring housing on, I mean, this area here, extremely, extremely sharp. Um, I don't know why they they would do that, you know, not round them off, make them better, but anyways. Um, overall, I would say that, that this is the best and most accurate production 1911 that I've ever shot. I put about 500 rounds through it um, at, at seven yards, 15 yards, and 25 yards. And you know, my ability to shoot this firearm and then also my ability to shoot my ACW 
are on par. I mean, this, this is just an exceptional gun. Um, I will say that out of those 500 rounds, I had two failure feats, but I'd imagine that those are um, contributed to the magazine that I was using. 99% uh, of, the, of the time I was using a Wilson Combat Mag. That The other couple times I was using just a standard GI Mag and it ended up giving me problems. Moving forward, uh, if you're interested in a rail gun, just know that there's different variants out there. This one was built in 2011. I got that information by looking up the serial number on Colt's website. Uh, the website isn't always accurate as far as them having all of the of their serial numbers in, in the database, but if you are able to find a Colt serial number in, in, in the database, it'll, it'll, it'll tell you everything about it. From 2009 to 2012, the rails for Colt are gonna look like this, okay? Um, I, I call it their thin rail, even though it's not really thin, but it's, it's a hell of a lot thinner than their, their rail that came out uh, sometime after July, 2012. The reason why they decided to upgrade and change their rails is because in July of 2012, the uh, United States Marine Corps uh, finally settled on the pistol that they were going to use for their Marine Special Operations Command, which was the M45A1. During the trials, they had issues with this type of rail cracking after tens of thousands of rounds and other various tests that were going on. So they decided to beef up the frame and after they beefed it up and it, it ended up working for that $22.5 million contract for 12,000 M M45s, Colt decided to just stick with that. It didn't make any sense to have two different, you know, rails being made when they can just stick with the beefed up one and move forward. What that means is from August of 2012 forward, the rails on Colts are gonna be different. Okay. Um, there are different versions out there. So you have your Colt railgun. Okay, so from 2009 to July of 2012, they're gonna look, look like this. And then from August 2012 on, they're gonna have the thicker frame. You also have the Colt M M45A1, which is based off of the um, well, which is the, the Marine Corps variant. You're gonna have the Colt Combat Unit, model number O1070CCU. And then also the Colt Combat Unit, model number O1080RGCCU, which is essentially the same as the previous one. They just added a ambi safety and a magwell to it. And then uh, they also have the Colt Special Combat Railgun. And there was in between like 100 and 150 of, of these made. But those were you know, very, very special guns. They were, they were uh, I can't remember what it's, what it's called, but the sharp, the sharp edges were nearly non-existent. They were rounded off like, like that melted look a little bit. Right? And um, the entire gun is just, just beautiful. This is by far the, the best production gun I've ever owned. It's just a well-constructed, solid gun. Um, I would say that it's, it's a notch above its competitors as far as comparing it to Springfield and, and Kimber and Smith & Wesson and various, various ma manufacturers like that. Uh, it's not a perfect gun, right? But it is a Great gun, if you wanted to just take it out and beat it up, it's gonna run, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna work for you. Overall, I'm very pleased with this Colt. It's an exceptional gun, and um, you know, hopefully sometime soon, I will be able to take it out and get far more rounds, rounds through it and give you guys an update in the future. And with that, signing off, have a good one.